Hi everyone, Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes here. In this video we will be talking about the shadow and highlight detail recovery with the high dynamic range tool. Let's begin. The tool was significantly improved in Capture 120, so now you can control the brightness of four different ranges, of four different tone ranges independently. So if we take a look at our sliders, now we have highlight, shadow, white and black. The highlight slider covers a wider range of the bright tones that partly includes the mid-tones. So if we compare highlight and white, the slider white focuses on the topmost highlights. So this one is only for the strongest highlights, but highlight includes mid-tones. Looking at the next slider, shadow, it covers a wider range of the dark tones and it affects the mid-tones as well. And in comparison with the shadow slider, the black concentrates on the deepest shadows of the image. So let's take a quick look at our example. If we take a closer look, if I zoom in, we can see the amount of detail that was possible to recover. So let's take a look at 100%. So you can see here all these nuances that were lost in our original image here in the shadows. I was able to recover it with the high dynamic range tool and a little bit of processing. So let's maybe hide our processed image and let's take a look at the original one. Let's hide the browser. So a good practice when working on detail recovery is to start with the white and black sliders. So let's select the background layer and let's start manipulating with the sliders. Let's maybe start with the white slider. I would like to recover a little bit of the detail here in the sky and maybe make it a little bit darker to balance with the foreground. So if I start manipulating with the white slider, it gives me a little bit of result, but even if I pull it all the way to the left, it's not enough. So if I click on the white, I see the before, and if I release it, I will see the after. So it gave me a very subtle effect. I want a little bit more. So now I'm moving over to the highlight slider that affects mid-tones as well. So let's maybe manipulate with this one. So you can see that I'm recovering more detail in the sky. The sky got a little bit darker. We have a little bit more of these nuances here in the clouds, but remember that it darkened the foreground as well. It darkened the river. So let's now focus on the foreground, on the dark area in the image. Let's start with the black slider. If I will push the slider towards the right hand side, it will make the shadows brighter. So when I was manipulating with the highlights, I wanted to make the bright areas darker. So this can be achieved with negative values, but to recover detail in the shadow, I need to be pushing the slider towards the right hand side and manipulate with positive values. So manipulating with the black slider allowed me to recover detail in the shadow. However, when I start pushing the slider further, it ruins the, the effect of the blue hour. So now we have sort of a day image with the pink orange sky. So this is too much if we just pull it back. And let's try to combine the black slider with the shadow slider. So if I now move over and push the shadow slider to the right hand side, I'm getting a little bit of detail recovery in the mid-tones, which is balancing the image. However, I have now counter action to what I've done before with the sky. So if I click on the shadow, the, you can see that the sky is getting brighter as well, particularly this area here near the mountains and near the horizon. 
So in this situation, I can see that the shadow slider gives me some benefit to the shadow, to the dark part. However, it ruins the result on the sky. So I don't want to apply the shadow slider on this layer. Let's just reset the tool. I'm going to create another layer with the masks. So let's move over and select the foreground layer that I have created in advance. And if we hit M, you can see that I have applied a quick gradient mask that covers my foreground. So let's hit M again. And now on this separate layer on the mask, I will be manipulating with the shadow slider. So if I push it towards the right hand side, we can see that we are getting some more detail within the mid-tones area. As you remember, I've mentioned that before that these two last sliders affect only the deepest blacks, the black slider and the brightest highlights, the white. These two sliders, highlights and shadow, they both affect midtones. So let's click on the shadow and see before and after. So maybe it's a little bit too much. Let's let reduce it a fraction. Okay, so remember that you can introduce layers when you are applying your shadow and highlight detail recovery. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. So in case of this image, we can see here that definitely we are losing plenty of detail in the shadow area and there is huge potential for these textures, these details to be revealed with the HDR tool. And when we are looking at the bright part at the sky, if I enable the exposure warning tool, it gives me overlay over the areas where I'm clipping highlights, where I'm clipping the brightest tones. So let's try to fix this with the high dynamic range tool. Let's maybe start here first again with the highlights, with the brightest tones. And as I've already recommended, I'm going to start with the white and black sliders. So let's pull the white slider towards the left hand side and let's maybe keep our exposure warning enabled. So I will check if I'm fixing the clipped highlights. I have taken this image against the sun. So this is the light source. And obviously I cannot make it way darker. It would simply look unnatural, but I can still try to fix my clipped highlights with the highlight tool. So in this case, I didn't get enough result with my white slider, even if I have pulled it all the way to the left. So I'm going to move over and touch the highlight slider and by manipulating with the slider, I'm getting a little bit more detail in the highlight. And actually I've managed to make the brightest part, the sun, a little bit darker than pure white. So if I now check my color readouts, we can see the 242, 243 and 244. Okay, so let's switch off the exposure warning. And I would say that for the now I am happy with the detail recovery on the highlights. Let's take a look at the before and after. So this is before the highlight detail recovery and after. Let's now take care of the shadow. So let's move over to the black slider. And if I start pushing it towards the right and applying positive values, I will be recovering detail in the shadow. However, be careful with pushing this slider too far because we still want to maintain some contrast. As we can see, the picture was taken against quite a harsh sunshine. So these dark shadows are inevitable. They are actually creating depth if this image. So there is no point to push the black sliders all the way to the right because now as a result, we just ruined the image. It looks completely artificial and natural. So we are after natural looking results. We want to just create a balanced, harmonious image. So to my taste, the value about 32, 33 is sufficient. And one more tip here, if you are manipulating with quite high values, so in this case, when I'm operating with the black and I have 33 here and the shadow area, the foreground is actually getting a bit of a dull and flat look. So now I can try to counteract this operation with negative, very minimal negative value on the shadow slider. So if I pull this slider to the left hand side, I will be adding darker tones and this has to be done very carefully and in a very subtle way. So if we 
check again, we can see that we are actually getting a little bit of a nice contrast here in this first hills area. So if I move it a bit further to the left, this is getting stronger and just creates a more punch in the image. So let's just try the blacks before and after and the shadow before and after. And let's now see the whole tool before and after. So I'm alt clicking on the reset arrow and this is our result. So this is the image before and after. I would say that I made maybe a little bit too much on the blacks. So just let's pull this slider a little bit backwards. And the value around 20 gives a bit more balanced result. Okay, so once after we finished working with the HDR tool, I want to show you on this example that the HDR tool works perfectly well in combination with the Clarity tool. Okay, so once we finished working on highlight and shadow detail recovery in this image, I want to show you the tool that works perfectly well in combination with HDR. And this tool is the Clarity tool. So once we have our image balanced, we can add a little bit of a local contrast to the image. So let's touch up the Clarity tool and I will cover this tool in detail in some of the next videos in the course, but just for this moment, I want you to remember to always try to combine these two tools because they complement very, very well. So let's see the before and after applying the clarity. And the same as with the HDR tool, the clarity tool should be applied in a very subtle way. If you apply the clarity in excess, you will start getting issues in your image, you will start getting halos. So in this case, I'm going to work just on one layer, but if I would continue working on that image, I would be tempted to create a separate layer and work on a mask, apply a little bit of additional clarity on this part here, on those hills, on those mountains close to the horizon. Because now, after applying clarity at the, the amount of 97, it's just ruining the foreground and the sky, but this part looks nicer. So I would create new layer and apply the clarity at around maybe 60. And now for the moment, let's stick the value to much lower number around maybe 30. Let's see the before and after. And when you are editing images like this, it's always a very good idea to step away from the screen for at least 10, 20 minutes. So if you take a short break, when you get back to your screen, you will be much faster when assessing if the adjustments were applied in a sufficient way or if there is too much of the adjustments. The same goes with working with color and especially when you are working with color. It is not that problematic to judge if the clarity was applied too strongly or not. But when you are working with color, when you are looking at certain image for a long time, you simply stop noticing the color. And it's really, really recommended to go away and get back after a while. Okay, and while I'm talking about color, let's get back to our HDR tool and note that both sliders, highlights and shadow will affect colors and shades in your image. So to avoid any surprises, to avoid any color shifts, any color work should be applied after the HDR tool. This short video on highlight and shadow detail recovery is an excerpt from my brand new course on Capture One, Capture One Pro 20, your fast track to unforgettable photos. I have a link in the description below. Check it out. You can get it now with 20% discount from the original price. Thanks for watching. See you by now.